Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm your narrator for today, Ray Jericho. In the depths of Marvel's darker realms lies the petrifying Omega Clan, a notorious family with a long history of tormenting the X-Men crew. Among their ranks is the infamous Arkady Rosevich, aka Omega Red, a viciously barbaric renegade mutant who was genetically enhanced through prolonged experiments. However, even Omega Red pales in comparison to the terrifying offspring of his twisted legacy. While not technically Omega Red's biological children, the Omega Clan carries their progenitor's malevolence and toxic bloodline, inflicting terror on those who cross their path. Introduced in the chilling Uncanny X-Force issue 25 in 2012, this ominous trio consists of three clones of Omega Red, each harnessing mortifying abilities. Financed by none other than Wolverine's own son, Dakin, these three scary dudes were literally programmed to ensure that their resentment was felt by everyone unfortunate enough to encounter them. In this video, we will discuss the Omega Red clones and delve into the intricacies of their clan's origin. So, without wasting another moment, let's get right to it. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who are the Omega Clan, and what did they want with the X-Force crew? The Omega Clan is a group of clones based on the genetics of Arkady Rosevich, the OG Omega Red, who was an insidious foe to the X-Men, particularly Wolverine. These clones were created by the secret criminal organization known as the White Sky, who supposedly specialized in crafting tailored superhumans for their diabolical clients, but in reality, they turned people into mass murdering psychotic weapons and sold them out like cars. The company operated from a floating base disguised as a cloud, known as the Cloud. Dakin's brotherhood of evil mutants hired the White Sky to create the Omega Clan clones as additional muscle to confront and defeat X-Force. So, in exchange for an insane amount of money, the White Sky created the Omega Red, Omega Black, and Omega White as part of the Omega Clan from the remains of the original Omega Red. They were the most expensive assassins ever made by the company and were infused with a traumatic backstory, keeping the X-Force as the primary antagonists in their picture so they could have a solid reason to fuel their lethal actions. The Omega Clan imbued profound hatred for the team, believing that they were responsible for their fictional parents' death. Alongside carrying the legacy of Omega Red's aggression and toxic bloodline, they were programmed to despise the X-Force, particularly Wolverine, fostering an intense desire for vengeance against the heroic team. Dakin, who was actually Wolverine's son and the leader of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, sought to augment his ranks with powerful allies, including including Sabretooth, Mystique, the Skinless Man, the Blob from the Age of Apocalypse, the Shadow King, and the Omega Clan, which he got custom-made from the White Sky. Their ultimate goal was to manipulate and torture Evan Sabanur, also known as Genesis, into becoming the New Apocalypse. They intended to use the Shadow King to manipulate Evan's mind and turn him against the X-Men, causing destruction and chaos, which would ultimately oust the existence of the crew in front of the entire world blaming them for all the chaos and destruction. The Brotherhood's plan involved orchestrating events to push Evan towards embracing his dark potential and causing devastation, all while framing X-Force for their actions. They sought to use the Omega Clan's powers and hatred for the X-Men to further their sinister agenda. What was the role of the Omega Clan in the final execution story arc? The Omega Clan first appeared in the final execution story arc as a three-sibling trio with the sole mission to obliterate Wolverine, Deadpool, Nightcrawler, and possibly all of the X-Force. When Deadpool disguised himself as a rich buyer in need for a custom assassin, the White Sky Sentry lured him into a trap so the Omega Clan could deal with the crew that would come to his rescue. When Wolverine and Nightcrawler arrived to rescue Deadpool and destroy the White Sky, the Omega Clan ambushed them. Omega Red, Omega Black, and Omega White, fueled with revenge, accused them of slaughtering their parents and ending their family. They were infused with the false memories that Wolverine, Deadpool, and the Nightcrawler hunted their normal human family down to their home and ripped off their father's head while the mother ran to protect her three children. They apparently watched the mutants brutally slaughter their family because their father had invented a cure to some autoimmune disease, which some pharmaceutical company vehemently opposed. So they hired the X-Force to deal with the situation once and forever. The three siblings remained hidden and garnered their quest for vengeance against the X-Force until their benefactor, aka Dakin, came along and helped them undergo this enhanced 
augmentation so they could match up with the X-Force and wipe them off from the face of the Earth. Or at least, that was what they were made to think. So Omega Red attacked Wolverine with his turbocharged super lupus that reads the body's internal organs as foreign objects in need of immediate destruction, causing Wolverine to swell up with pus as his body gets subjected to mass inflammation and begins to corrode and decay from within till it explodes like a balloon. Omega White, on the other hand, had poisoned the Nightcrawler to turn older at an alarmingly fast rate, while Deadpool somehow fled underneath the Eiffel Tower, only to come back with Alpha Acromic, a robot to fight the Omega Clan or or just weighed them off till the X-Force could escape. The bloating caused Wolverine to rip apart his stomach using his adamantium claws and release the toxins from his body, finally curing him. On the other hand, Nightcrawler tried to fight back Omega Black and Omega White, but he withered with the receding age clock ticking and started throwing up blood. Luckily, the robot was strong enough to distract the Omega siblings while the X-Force barely escaped as they teleported back to the Blackbird, where they could finally hook up a deadbeat Nightcrawler to the Med Station. The new brother the hood of the evil mutants employed the divide and conquer policy as they attacked Phantom X using Mystique to disguise herself as Psylocke and inject him with the poison that would shut down his mutant powers and enable him to get drawn towards misdirection. On the other hand, Sabretooth and Blob go down to Genosha to kidnap Evan, while Phantom X reaches Betsy's apartment to find her in complete hysteria under the Shadow King's influence. Unfortunately, Phantom X's healing abilities were non-existent due to the poison, so when the skinless man attacked him, Phantom X chose to rip his mask and place it on Betsy so her connection to the Shadow King could be severed. He saved her by putting her on his ship to be escaped but lost his life to the skinless man who ripped out his only heart in a contrasting irony of his three brains. After Betsy escaped, she reached the X cavern where it was revealed that the new brotherhood led by Dakin was behind everything. Ultimaton turned into a rogue sentinel after Phantom X died and lost his hold over the mutant killing robot leading him to kill Gateway and detonating himself to explode much like an atom bomb. So this led the brotherhood and the Omega clan to believe that the X force was dead for good, but in reality, they just time jumped 30 years into the future with the help of Psylocke, who entered Gateway's mind to harness his powers for a jump to save their lives. While they were gone, Dakin had successfully turned Evan into the new apocalypse known as Genesis with the help of the Shadow King's foul mind tricks, who also used this time to get into the head of the Omega siblings and apparently help them unlock repressed memories of the X-Force fiends ruining their lives, which would aid in fueling them up to not fail the Brotherhood in the pending battle. When Deadpool came to rescue Evan from the Brotherhood's facility, he got attacked by Omega Black, who used her cybernetic tendrils to catch hold of him and pierce him with toxins that immediately caused his entire body to break out in nasty hives. While he cut off her tendrils with his sword and attacked Blob in order to use his gigantic body as a shield against Omega Black's toxic attack, unfortunately, Evan attacked Deadpool under the Shadow King's influence and got him captured. Omega Black restrained him to a chair and embedded a tele telepathic dampening device in his ear, causing Deadpool to open up his psyche to the Shadow King. Dakin ordered a ruthless torture on Deadpool, as Evan was made to watch everything. On the other hand, Wolverine infiltrated the Brotherhood's control room and overpowered Omega Red, Omega White, the Skinless Man, and Sabretooth all by himself, until a brainwashed Nightcrawler decided to betray the X-Force team in exchange for his revenge on Blob. As Omega Black beat Deadpool into a pulp, and accused him of ruining her family. Dakin had a tragic one-on-one -on -one with a tied-up Wolverine. Evan watched it all happen and was a brink away from losing it all as he approached the cybernetic apocalypse suit that would amplify his powers as the new apocalypse. Deadpool begged him to stop, but Omega Black kept calling him a maniac and beat him to town. Luckily, Dakin asked Omega Black to bring Evan to the room where he had trapped his father, Wolverine. Evan was forced by Dakin to kill him and meet his destiny, or he would drown Wolverine to death. When he didn't, Dakin started punching the kid in the hope that he would charge his powers by fighting back. But Omega Black stopped him before he killed Evan and carried the child's unconscious body back to the room where a withered Deadpool lay who somehow helped the child gain his consciousness back and tried to stop him from making any rash decisions. Unfortunately, it was too late as Evan was already on edge and finally donned the cybernetic apocalypse suit to stop the Brotherhood's ruthlessness. Deadpool killed the skinless man minutes before Evan was about to blast him off while Wolverine and Dakin fought to death 
leading the former to finally kill his own son, as he was too far gone to be saved. Followed by this, Omega White, with the lifeless body of Omega Red in his arms, approached Psylocke, who had now freed herself from the mind games of the Shadow King. He blamed the X-Force and her for what became of his family and his brother, leading him to drain Psylocke of her psychic powers in his quest for vengeance. In a different location, the sinister Shadow King was on the hunt for Psylocke, seeking to ensnare her in his malevolent grasp. However, his pursuit led him to Omega White, who claimed to have already this dispatched Psylocke, but this was a clever deception orchestrated by Psylocke herself. Using her psychic abilities, she manipulated Omega White's artificial mind and seizes control of his body. In a stunning twist, Psylocke used her newfound control over Omega White to ensnare and trap the Shadow King within his own psychic link. With no escape route, the malevolent entity found himself confined within the depth of Omega White's consciousness. Psylocke's brilliant stratagem effectively contained the Shadow King thwarting his dark intentions and safeguarding herself from his pernicious influence. While we are unaware of what really became of Omega Black in this particular block, it seems like Omega Red was dead and Omega White was turned into a mindless vegetable harboring the Shadow King. What became of the Omega Clan after the defeat of the Brotherhood of the Evil Mutants? Okay, so let's start with the supposedly dead Omega sibling who, to be honest, was not really dead. Well, after the downfall of Dakin's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and the defeat of the Omega Clan, Omega Red's fate took a tumultuous turn, where he somehow survived and joined the Roxxon Corporation, where he began his career as a mercenary. But everything almost came undone when he clashed with Deadpool and his hardwired hatred for the mutant simply took over. During his encounters with Deadpool, Omega Red sought revenge, but finally realized that his mind was implanted with false memories, which caused him to think that he was supposed to end anyone in relation to the X-Men. However, their repeated clashes eventually led Deadpool to convince Omega Red that they were both victims of manipulation and had been turned into monsters by external forces. This revelation prompted a truce between the two adversaries, and Omega Red agreed to leave Deadpool alone, provided he did not discover any evidence of his involvement in the murder of Omega Red's family. Despite their truce, Omega Red's life took a darker turn when he met his demise, seemingly killed by unknown means. But his story was far from coming to an end, as the enigmatic Persephone, the leader of a shady company called Soterra, resurrected him as one of her undead soldiers, under her control and devoid of his former self. As one of Persephone's undead soldiers, Omega Red was deployed to guard a Soterra base and carried out her orders without question. He engaged in brutal killings, executing those who tried to escape the base during evacuation. It was during one of these missions that he encountered Wolverine, who was trying to put a stop to Persephone's sinister plans. In a violent encounter, the undead Omega Red clashed with Wolverine and temporarily incapacitated him, but Wolverine managed to strike back and escape with the help of another reanimated corpse, Anna, who was being used as a vessel by Persephone. Following the intense battles with Wolverine and Anna, Omega Red's undead existence was finally brought to an end when they managed to defeat him and his reanimated ally, Dakin. However, Omega Red's story took another twist when he was mysteriously resurrected again, along with the rest of the Omega Clan. Their path led them to the new mutant haven of Krakoa, a paradise created by Xavier, Magneto, and Moira X where mutants could come together, heal, and forge a united future as a species. Coming back to Omega Black, after Evan Sabanor started destroying the Brotherhood's underwater base and the X-Force defeated the evil mutant crew, she fled for her life. But Omega Black's fate took a dark and twisted turn as she became a vessel for the malevolent Shadow King in the Crimson Pirate story arc. The Crimson Pirates, under orders to deliver Omega Black to Telemore Vogue, were unaware of the danger lurking within her. The Shadow King's host body had been sealed in a tomb in the Gobi Desert by Brian or someone under his command. Unfortunately, the Crimson Pirates unknowingly released the Shadow King, who ended up possessing Omega Black with disastrous consequences, like when Bloody Bess, a telepath among the pirates, accidentally released the Shadow King from Omega Black's body during a psi scan, infecting all of the Crimson Pirates except for herself. In a desperate attempt to defeat the Shadow King, Bess and Psylocke managed to break free from his mind control and sent Nightcrawler to confront the malevolent entity. Armed with Psylocke's Psyblade, Nightcrawler stunned the Shadow King and they were able to seal him once again within Omega Black's body, restoring a semblance of control. Despite the harrowing encounter with the Shadow King, Omega Black's journey didn't end there. After the turmoil caused by the Brotherhood's defeat, 
and the Shadow King's possession. Omega Black was among the mutants who were invited to the new mutant haven of Krakoa, alongside her makeshift family. Lastly, we have Omega White, who turned into a vegetative prison for the Shadow King post the Brotherhood's defeat, all thanks to Psylocke, who made sure that his body was in strict custody of the X-Force under EVA's guard. Soon after the Shadow King departed from Omega White's body, his mind underwent a mysterious and remarkable restoration, allowing him to regain full control of himself, with his true identity no longer obscured by external manipulation. Following this transformative event, Omega White joined his two other siblings from the Omega Clan to the newly established mutant sanctuary of Krakoa, which offered him and his entire clan a true chance at redemption in a place where his unique abilities and experiences could contribute to the collective strength and resilience of mutant kind. As the Omega Clan stood united in this newfound haven, they became a vital part of a new chapter in the story of mutant kind, leaving behind the dark shadows of their past and embracing the hope and unity that Krakoa represented. What do all three members of the Omega Clan look like? How powerful is the Omega Clan? As their name suggests, Omega Red wore a red suit, Omega White wore a white suit, and naturally, Omega Black wore a black suit. While Omega Red and Omega Black had the infamous Omega symbol tattooed onto their forehead, the real face of Omega White is never really revealed, so we don't really know what he actually looks like. Omega Red had blonde hair, pale skin, and red eyes. His cybernetic augmentation allowed him to launch long retractable robotic tendrils made out of carbonadium from his right hand, which allowed him to incapacitate his victims with poison. This guy had his own special autoimmune disease in the form of some kind of super lupus that even left Wolverine pining for his breath. Moreover, he also has superhuman strength and highly increased stamina, owing to his muscles that generate super low levels of toxins, resulting in a super low level of fatigue. Omega Red is also durable enough to protect himself from gunshots or explosions, or even physical blows. Apart from his superior reflexes and highly agile anatomy, his regenerative healing ability is absolutely remarkable, allowing him to recover from puncture wounds and even slashed skin from Wolverine's claws. Omega Black had raven black hair and brown eyes. Her armor suit had subtle hints of gray and had a carbonadium cybernetic plate on her chest, with five holes that allowed her to launch multiple cybernetic tendrils to infect her target with the maximum fatality. Like when she poisoned Deadpool, infecting him with cancer, leaving him half dead and completely dismantling his mutant regenerative or healing abilities. Coming to Omega White, I wonder if he even has a face. Omega White, clad in a silver white armor with subtle hints of blue, had white eyes, but his face was always covered in a robotic helmet. His Stark suit was actually intangible, protecting him from any form of physical attacks, and he also had the ability to poison his enemies by secreting life-threatening toxins from his cybernetic tendrils, like his other siblings. Omega White could suck in the psychic force of his victims simply by sticking his coils into their heads and slowly draining their life force, which honestly makes him a goddamn psychic vampire. I mean, he could paralyze the Shadow King, even if he was under Psylocke's influence. In his first encounter with the X-Force, Omega White attacked the Nightcrawler by shooting blue laser beams from his eyes, turning his victim's body blue, old, and fragile. And like his brother, Omega White was also capable of manipulating energy, creating massive blocks from it. As members of the new mutant nation of Krakoa, the Omega Clan may have found themselves settling into a quieter existence compared to their previous tumultuous history, while they may have become background fixtures on the island. Their past deeds and legacy in the Marvel Universe are a testament to their significance and potential for future prominence, owing to their unique abilities and connection to the progenitor, which has given them a distinct place in mutant lore. Will this artificially augmented sibling trio ever get their main storyline beside or against our favorite superheroes? It remains to be seen what the Omega Clan's future has in store for them. So with that, we have covered everything that has been discussed about the Omega Clan in the Marvel comics, leading us to the very end of this video. Which Omega sibling do you think is the most powerful amongst the entire clan? And please do not forget to let us know about your thoughts and opinions in the comment box below.